Hey guys, I don't know if you're like me, but I love Count the Dings and everything it has to offer. I just can't find everything I need. You know, I know about Cinephobe and I know about the mailbag and I know about Bomb, but that's all we do, right, I mean? No, we do so much more. What? Yeah, absolutely. If you sign up, patreon.com slash count the dings, you'll find a plethora of other content, fresh content, extended content, the OG pod overflow, the Cinephobe cold opens that we've taken and made their own thing to live only there. The Rewatchingtons bomb in its full Ooh. and unadulterated cut early drops of Cinephobe episodes and so much more. Said the OG pod, now is it new or is it old? Mace, I'm glad you asked that. It is a new incarnation mm -hmm. of the old OG pod. Oh. So it's me, Zach, Trey, Waz, Tom. I love those guys. Just like we always were going back to the true hoop days, mm -hmm. we're recreating that magic, recapturing it and putting it back out. We're talking hoops, we're talking pop culture, and most importantly, we're talking for 40 minutes for free, mm -hmm. but then another specific Patreon exclusive segment for every one of those episodes. Funny enough about that OG pod, you're getting Tom and Trey on Mondays, you're getting me and Waz, aka Zosny, on Wednesdays. Amin's floating in between. I'm a floater. You never know when you're going to get Amin in those, so you got to listen to them all. And what if I'm not sure what Maze looks like? Because I've always thought he's a fat man with a fedora, he's got a weird voice. How can I see for myself what this Maze character actually looks like? It's crazy you don't know the answer to this mm. because it's the Cinephobe Pod YouTube page. What? The CT5s on the Cinephobe Pod YouTube page. You can look at all of us. You can get all the OG pods on YouTube too at Count the Dings One on YouTube, at Cinephobe Pod on YouTube, patreon.com slash count the dings gets you everything all in one feed. You can link it to your Spotify. And now enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Paul Giamatti. And I'm Stephen Asma. Join us on the Chinwag Podcast every Wednesday where we trade the banal and the boring for the super strange and bizarre. They committed human sacrifice? I did bring up human sacrifice, yes. You sure yeah. did. That just went by fast. Kind of casually tossed that out. I would like to have an alien uh, hatchet young inside. Holy shit, really? She saw world peace and I saw demons coming out of the wall. I will say that there was a green couch outside of the principal's office and you sat on it if you had lice or if you got into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they wake you up from the goo pods to live in reality and you're naked and screaming. It's like... <laughs> Follow us for free on Apple Podcasts and all major podcast platforms. For more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find enlightenment through our Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. When you listen to Nobody Listens to Paula Poundstone, the comedy podcast, you learn stuff. I've been learning to throw a boomerang because this is the kind of thing that really gets the listeners engaged, you know. <laughs> Interviews with people who will make you smarter. Does the amount that you learn protect you from cognitive decline? Paula, don't <laughs> <laughs> Can't people just listen to the show? Can't they just enjoy a delightful treehouse full of information? And I think I'm bleeding. <laughs> Join us and be a nobody. Okay, what do all these funny people have in common? Cecily Strong, Jason Manzukis, Duncan Trussell, Paul Shear, Scott Ackerman, Beth Stelling, Tom Papa, Lauren Lapkus, Louis Anderson, Lisa Gilroy, Paul F. Tompkins, and Sir Patrick Stewart. They've all played characters on the hit comedy podcast, Mega, an improvised satire from the staff of a fictional mega church. The next time you're in the mood for some laughs, great guests, out of this world improv and cultural commentary, we're here for you, baby. Listen to Mega anywhere you listen to podcasts. Am I the Jerk is a show where we talk about real stories like my stepdad found out that I have a $4 million inheritance and tried to steal it from me when my mom died. Am I the Jerk for how far I took my revenge? Or you might even see a story like this. My mother-in-law photoshopped my wedding photos to change my nose. Am I the Jerk for what I did in response? So Am I the Jerk is the perfect show to put on in the background while you're driving, studying, drawing, or just chilling out. And the best part is you can send in your own stories from your own life to be featured and discussed on the show. Just subscribe to Am I the Jerk and you'll see how to do that there via amithejerk.com slash submit. You can freely share the deepest secrets of your 
your life because you can still remain anonymous when you send in your stories. So either way, subscribe to Am I the Jerk right now before you forget. We'd love to be a part of your daily routine. New episodes every day. Am I the Jerk? This podcast contains mature content, explicit language, suggestive situations, and partial to full frontal nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Don't let your kids listen to this. We get it, Amin. You've seen Oz and You've you know the Oz. people in the wire from Oz. Now recreate the orgasm song. You had an HBO subscription in the year 2002. Congratulations. My roommate had an HBO subscription, but <laughs> <laughs> more importantly, no one told me that Airheads was going to be an Oz movie. Oh, oh my God. It's an Oz bursting, movie, Amin. Bursting with Oz. I was so <laughs> I tittering. <laughs> Yo. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Woo! I cheered my ass off in that movie. It was okay, Zach. I thought it was okay. I loved it. <laughs> Man, you weren't, like, you said four chitters, but what was that out of? Out of five. No, oh, you're wild. Come on, man. I saw the trailer for Wolverine versus Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That was one of the 50 hours of trailers that were before Planet of the Apes. Oh, my God. What's so that wasn't just my theater. No, no, no. 30 minutes is now the standard. 10 minutes of commercials, 20 minutes of trailers. I like trailers. I'm one of the people, and I know you can just go on YouTube and watch them all. No, it's different in the theater. I like a couple. I like that there's something about sitting there and discovering this shit for the first time. Like, oh, they're making a this? Yeah. I'll never forget one of the most memorable trailers I've ever watched was Jurassic Park 3. <sighs> Greatest trailer of all time. Dude, I'm telling you, by the end of that trailer, I literally took out 20 bucks in my pocket, and I yelled at the screen, <laughs> here, take my money now. When they zoom in on it, he goes, it's a bird cage. <laughs> I chittered like you could not imagine. Guess who I saw Jurassic Park 3 with? Who? Oh, my brother. brother. Yes. <laughs> I was Cobra Formula. You have a brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> El Hassan Formula. <laughs> Just that question. <laughs> I was stunned that his brother didn't have the HBO subscription, that it was his roommate. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a cosmic mix of the action of the 90s combined with the exploitation films of the 70s. But with modern touches, it's hyper-violence, but it knows that it is. It's a little bit Tarantino. It's definitely a little bit Michael Mann. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. It almost moves to the beat of jazz. People are genetically inferior, or they're culturally crippled, or they're socially deprived. How come God couldn't make everyone one color? Like ten. I wish I'd fucked a black broad before I got married. I could really feel 400 years of oppression and anger in every pelvic thrust. I can smell horny across an ocean. <sighs> Not all women. Good for you, man. Good for you, good for you. Just the hot ones. Hello. Oprah. You're not allowed to go down on me for one month. No, Judith, Don't please. Don't make me take away your masturbation privileges. Yeah, I'm horny too, baby. Hey, Chowman, come on down here. Well, you want to exercise my dominance. Scaring I'm getting a patriarchal urge. Look out for number one. Set your sights on the stars and the sun. Look out for number one. You gotta put your little heart. Push your little heart. Yeah, yeah. Don't mind me. Just keep doing what you're doing. We're a team. We work together. I don't know if you were paying attention. <laughs> I was. Please, God damn it! Just one more drink! I'll call your tits with a knife, you bitch! Five whiskeys. That's breakfast on the river. Yo, you have to clip it, Maze. Clip what? A fucking tiger? What are you talking about? It's not that hard. Just chop, chop, boom, out. Wow, Maze has a really hard job. <laughs> this is going to be the worst episode we've ever done. My people don't give a ding-dong diddly about what flag fly over Hawaii. You bore me, Fury. Where is the Mikro film? He's nothing but a bag of meat and flesh. Why didn't they just name him Spaghetti Lasagna? Fuck, this movie's two hours long? Look the whole thing. <laughs>
This is like the John Gruden emails of movies. Do you like ducks? Or a trench coat full of bees flying around? Like, that would scare me. Bees, bees, bees are that. cool. That's a duck, man. No, I get it. Coolio. You're the devil's baby, mama. I didn't lie, Annie. I just didn't tell you certain things. Don't play no reindeer games with me. An American ninja. What are you talking about? There's no such thing. gotten rich off of the people in this town. <laughs> you bet your ass I have. And I'm gonna get richer. Coglin's lure. Go into incredibly descriptive details of the story so we all know. Oh man, I wish I had better notes. Have you ever heard such a pail of shit? Once I get a DVD player, I'm gonna watch Gallo Walkers once a day. Come here and give me a squudge. You know what to do from here, internet. <laughs> all right, cool. Let me Google how to open QuickTime. Justice is blind. He's got space dementia. But it can be hurt. Time to find out exactly what this ooze can do. Pull the fucking rabbit out of your dick and phobe. I'm Temecula's newest hard on dog. Hey, look at here. Why don't we eat us a few thousand beers? You can tell me what's buzzing in the big bad city. Come on, yeah! You gotta look out for nothing. You, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out. Welcome to Cinephobe, the podcast we break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's me, Al Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Listen to us on Spotify or we're going to kidnap you. That sounds like a lot of work on our end. I don't know if I want to do that. Lazily. Spotify is where you can vote in the poll for the movie Phobe File. It's where you can leave a comment like the comments on CT5 characters as guests. Ben Mac 412 says Betty White from bringing down the house watching Street Kings. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. That's... That's a recipe. That's a lot of racism. Yeah. That's tough. Sterl321 <laughs> says, even if Amin hates the listeners, we love him. Heart. Why do I hate the listeners? You said you did. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> and Snack says, so nobody wants to watch World Trade Center with Pistachio Disguise? Oh. We haven't done that fucking movie. Well, also... I don't know that Pistachio was the one. Yeah. It's really a Dana Carvey in turtle costume. What if he's so method that he's just Pistachio the entire shoot time? Pistachio is distraught. Okay, now you got me interested. We want reviews. We want your CT5 list. Check out CT5 on the main feed. Make sure you leave in that suggestion or your list at Talk Hoops, at Darth Amin, at Corn Puzzle, at Cinephilpod, at Count the Dings, or leave it in that Patreon Discord, patreon.com slash Count the Dings. Get access to all the rewatched and live events. New ones, old ones, future ones. Future ones. Ad-free episode, cold open, full version. All the extra stuff from all of our other pods on Count the Dings. Early episodes. Just fucking subscribe. I shouldn't have to explain this every damn week. Wait, now is that fucking subscribe or fuck and subscribe? Either one. As long as the subscribe happens. I don't care what you do. Okay. Just fucking subscribe already. Exactly. Watch the CT5s on YouTube at Pod. Follow the Instagram at Pod. Mm -hmm. We are doing a live show in New York City on July 20th, the Saturday at Racket. Tickets are available now. If you are a Patreon, you can get 25% off your tickets, VIP or general admission. We haven't done a Cinephobe Live in a long time. Please come check it out. Saturday, July 20th, Racket in New York City. And check out the merch store, bit.ly slash all caps CTD merch, or click the link in the description of this episode. And if you have a submission, submit it. Reminder, it needs to be 40% or lower on the Rotten Tomatoes audience or critic score. Okay, recently, I shot us in the ass with a pellet gun that was meant at work. Yep. Maze then awakened us by putting his horn in us for Conan the Destroyer. Amin let us know that everything is aight with Half Past Dead. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now it's my turn. 
<laughs> and I'm picking the 1994 music crime comedy Airheads. Sure. Mm-hmm. I just had comedy. Airhead stars Brendan Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler. Brendan is now a four-time repeat offender for The Scout, Poison Rose, and Encino Man. I wish I knew how to quit you. He's got a resume on this episode. Mm-hmm. He had Encino Man and School Ties in 1992 with Honors, The Scout, and this movie in 94, and then Glory Days in 1995. Steve is also a four-time repeat offender. Huh. Armageddon, Escape from L.A., and Grown Ups 2. I wish I knew how to quit you. He had Rising Sun in 93, Hudsucker Proxy, Pulp Fiction, and this movie in 94, and then Billy Madison and Desperado in 95. That's a weird run. Yeah. Yeah, the breakout has begun for him. It started with Miller's Crossing, Barton Fink, King of New York, and Reservoir Dogs from 1990 to 92. Yeah. And then Reservoir Dogs hit which really launched him. And then this movie, Pulp Fiction, you name it, he became Steve Buscemi. But Steve Buscemi, it's a very puzzling movie career. He's a character actor. He's a go-to character actor. There's a little Sam Jackson to it in that he says yes to a lot. Except if Sam Jackson was friends with the biggest hack of them all, Sandman, and so he does all his shitty movies. Oh. Well, speaking of Sandman, welcome to the 10 Timers Club. A 10! A tan! A fucking tan! Gentlemen. Ten-time repeat offender. Grown-ups, too. Never had a month. Deuce Bigelow, too. That's my boy. Jack and Jill. Don't mess with the Zohan. Zookeeper. Master of Disguise. The Water Boy. And Grandma's Boy. He had Coneheads in 93, this movie in 94, and Billy Madison in 95. Unbelievable, man. He's on the cusp of becoming... Are you, are you unbelievable, man? That right there. We have Chris Farley, Michael McKeon, and Judd Nelson. Chris is a repeat offender for Almost Heroes. I wish I knew how to quit you. Michael, you know from Best in Show and Better Call Saul. Spinal Tap. All the Christopher Guest movies. Judd Nelson from New Jack City and Breakfast Club. Also Steel. Mm. Or Shaq Diesel. Future Cinephobe. Oh, yeah. Four-time repeat offender Ernie Hudson from Congo, The Watcher, and Mr. Magoo. I wish I knew how to quit you. What a resume. Amy, pretty. Another great actor with some really questionable. Questionable, yeah. He's also in Oz. Marshall Bell, repeat offender from Johnny B. Good and Twins. I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> David Arquette, repeat offender from 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Michael Richards, repeat offender from Problem Child. Joe Montaigne, repeat offender from Valentine's Day. Five-time repeat offender, Alan Covert. Oh, my God. From Grandma's Boy, The Water Boy, Jack and Jill, and Grown Ups 2. I wish I knew how to quit you. Lexi Bigum, repeat offender from Don't Be a Menace. Liddell M. Cheshire, repeat offender from Judgment Night and Great White Hype. Sam Whipple, repeat offender from Great White Hype. Kurt Loder, mm-hmm. repeat offender from Belly. That's right. And a bunch of reviews. John Melendez, repeat offender from Dude Where's My Car. Mike Judge, repeat offender from RIPD. Mark Bringleson, repeat offender for Lawnmower Man. Jim H. Campos, repeat offender from Blank Man. Gorgia Max, repeat offender from Eraser, Great White Hype, Ed Showgirls. And Blank Man. I knew I recognized that name. Bob Pepper, repeat offender for What Happens in Vegas, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, Gone in 60 Seconds, and A Low Down Dirty Shame. I wish I knew how to quit you. Amy Locan from Crybaby, School Ties, and Bong Water. I looked her up. Nina Samasco from The American President, Suicide Kings, and Breast Men. Reg E. Kathy from The Mask, Tank Girl 7, Hootie Tang, Oz. And The Wire. That's right. <laughs> Michelle Hurst from Orange is the New Black and Francis Ha. Harold Ramis from Ghostbusters Groundhog Day, as good as it gets, High Fidelity. Yeah. Rob Zombie and Lemmy Kilmeister as well. Airheads was directed by Michael Lehman. Michael directed Heather's Meet the Applegates, the short called The Beaver Gets a Boner. Oh, I bet he does. Hudson Hawk, My Giant, 40 Days and 40 Nights. What a weird resume. In 15 episodes of True Blood. It was written by Rich Wilkes. He wrote The Jerky Boys, Triple X, Vegas Dick, The Dirt, and Bulletproof 2. Bulletproof 2 keeps popping up. Sounds like you want us to pick Bulletproof 2. Synopsis for Airheads. Three band members hoping for a big break head to a radio station to play their demo tape and wind up holding everyone hostage with plastic guns when the head DJ refuses to play them. I mean... A little wordy. Yeah. That's putting a lot on the shark. It is, yeah. But okay. Tagline, the music, the legend, the hostage situation. Mm, no. What legend? I don't know. What legend? I guess they became legend. I don't know. Yeah. That's how it all started. We got alternates. 
the music made them do it. Okay, that one's more... They were a rock and roll band that couldn't get arrested. That was before they took an entire radio station hostage. Why couldn't they get arrested? They absolutely could have gotten arrested. Yeah. Especially for what I think Pip was doing out there. Look, the opening scene made it seem like he's really hard to catch. I guess, yeah. A comedy with attitude. Sure. Terrible. Generic as fuck. Terrible. Get ready to laugh, rock, and roll. Ugh. And then last one, the amps are on, but nobody's home. No one's home. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm, I'm back in. <laughs> You're in. I knew it made it like that. I had an eleven point two million dollar estimated budget, but I don't know how accurate that is. Yeah, that's what I had as well. Seems like a lot for that era. Grossed five point seven million U.S. and worldwide, but I'm guessing they made it all back in syndication because this movie was on TV constantly, mm -hmm. constantly. Just not right now. <laughs> Before we jump into this movie <laughs> and you listen to the rest of this podcast, Airheads is off streaming. You can't even rent it. It will hopefully be on by the time we record this. Otherwise, I don't know. Subscribe to the Patreon. Be a Patreon. Maze will get you the copy. Yeah, Maze will get it to you. Yeah, this is one of the weirder things to disappear. Because it's been streaming forever. The last movie that we had that you couldn't find anywhere. Eddie? Trippin'. Haven't done Trippin' yet. We still haven't done it. White Man's Burden. Oh, yeah. Rhinestone. 200 Cigarettes. Eddie, Kiss of Death. All those movies are way more obscure than Airheads. Airheads receives 29% on 38 reviews from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, 50% from the audience on over 100,000 ratings. I mean, check the positive or the negative reviews. I'm an amp turned up to five kind of guy, Zach. Give me the positives. Is that how that works? Yeah, I get that. I think that works. I don't know. I don't know how. These go to 11. You're joking at seven, though. Future callback. Positive review. <laughs> hey, John, that's weird. That glass looks half full to me. Wow. Now that you mention it, it is half full. Alistair Lawrence of Common Sense Media. A critical and commercial flop, this rock and roll comedy nonetheless features a cast of comedic talent who between them have enough screen presence and comic timing to carry its so-so screenplay. Mm, that's a very tepid yeah. positive review. Corey Woodruff of 615 Film. Any movie where David Arquette is just hanging out in the background for a majority of the runtime is good in my book. <laughs> is that because he likes David Arquette? I couldn't tell. Yeah, that's a good question. All right. Betsy Bosdetch. Not a real name. Of DVDjournal.com. Not a real name. Might be Bosdeck. It's E-C-H. While Airheads never quite delivers on its clever premise, it definitely could have been a lot worse. Not really a positive. Is the premise clever? No. Take Dog Day Afternoon, for example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Arguably Pacino's best work, short of Scarface and Godfather Part One, of course. Masterpiece of directing, easily Lamette's best. The cinematography, the, the acting, the screenplay, all top notch. But they didn't push the envelope. Now, what if in Dog Day, Sonny wanted to get away with it? Really wanted to get away with it? What if, now this is a tricky part. What if he started killing hostages right away? No mercy, no quarter. Meet our demands are the pretty blonde and the bell bottoms gets it in the back of the head. Bam, splat. What, still no bus? Come on. How many innocent victims splattered across the window would it take? to have the city reverse its policy on hostage situations. And this is 1976, there's no CNN, there's no CNBC, there's no, there's no internet. Now fast forward to today, present time, same situation. How quickly would the modern media make a frenzy over this? In a matter of hours, it would be the, the biggest story from Boston to Budapest. 10 hostages die, 20, 30, relentless, bam, bim, one after another. All caught in high def, computer enhanced, color corrected. You practically taste the brain matter. All for what? A bus? A plane? A couple of million dollars that's federally insured? I don't think so, but just a thought. I mean, it's not within the realm of conventional cinema, but. What if? Well, there's a problem with that movie. Really? It wouldn't work. How come? 
Audiences love happy endings. Pacino escapes with the money. Boyfriend gets a sex change. Live happily ever after. No? No. Ah, homophobia. Bad guy can't win. It's a morality tale. One way or the other, he's got to go down. Hmm. Well, life is stranger than fiction sometimes. Luke Y. Thompson of New Times. Lukey, baby. A bit of a mess, but one of Steve Buscemi's best performances before hitting it big time. Oh, fuck you, because this isn't even a guy in the moment. Right. This is a someone looking back with the benefit of hindsight. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your mic's selected. You don't know what's selected. <laughs> You have no idea. You have no idea what I got going on over here. I kind of feel like I'm hearing it. Now, there it is. There we go. You ever podcasted before? I'm excited to try it for the first time. Podcasting? <laughs> anything. Anything. He's never done anything before. <laughs> no, this is basically a poor thing situation. <laughs> oh, man. Furious podcasting. Furious podcasting. He's an author now, so he doesn't have to podcast. What's it called? Swim Shirt Tea Club or what is it? What is it? <laughs> it's Swim Shirt Tea Club. <laughs> it's Scrimshaw Beach Club. <laughs> Swim Shirt Tea Club sounds like a Florida grandma's group. <laughs> <laughs> the Swim Shirt Tea Club. Maze, when does this come out? When is this episode? That would be June 13th. Whoa. Oh, well, hold on a second. I believe this title is released that week? Indeed it is. Wow. June 11th. Some people are calling it Swim Shirt Tea Club. Some people are calling it T-Shirt Swim Club. Stories from being fat in a world of thin people by Ian Carmel and more importantly, Alyssa Carmel. Aliza. It's Aliza. See? No. See? I think I'd know. See? I should have invited Amin to the wedding. It should have been Amin instead of you at the wedding. I was invited. No, he wasn't. That's right. Pardon me. Amin did get invited to the wedding. I couldn't make it. I'm sorry. Somebody took a picture of you with a sword. It wasn't Amin. But somebody got me a brished knuckle colander. A brushed nickel colander. <laughs> brished. A brished <laughs> knuckle. He got you a briss? A briss. <laughs> We're going to start this episode over. Let's all. Somebody <laughs> gave me a knuckle briss inside a colander. <laughs> A knuckle briss is tougher than you think it is. Now that is a thoughtful gift. Now that is some old school Judaism right there. Pre-order my book, <laughs> Knuckle Briss Swim Club. <laughs> All right. T-shirt swim club. Stories from being fat in a world of thin people, Ian Carmel and Elisa Carmel. There he is. Who's a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Elisa Carmel. Yes. What? <laughs> She's a doctor. She's a psychologist. Why'd you say it like that? Because she is. She's a doctor. No, 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 no. There was a tone. I believe her credentials on this. She yelled at me about what I'm allowed to call her. Hold on. I have it. Okay. Because I called her the wrong thing and she said I could get in trouble. This is Ian Carmel. Ian Carmel. He's a comedian. She has a doctorate in clinical psychology, I think. Is what it is. Okay. I love that Ian just lives there. He has no idea what's, he has no idea. what's happening. He's worked on this book for what, two years now? About a year and a half? Well, she's yelled at me so many times about what I'm allowed to call her. It's all these like licensing where she's like not technically a clinical psychologist yet, even though she has a doctorate in it and yada, yada, yada. You're a clinical psychologist. I am. Well, yes, you obviously. I am, but she's not. But just on Melrose. Come find me on Melrose. I'm posted <laughs> up outside of the, that's a awful lot of cough syrup building <laughs> it's me doing psychology for no jumper you can come find me on melrose <laughs> bill villarreal of arizona daily star years later it's much easier to appreciate this cast of then unknowns which would develop into superstars yeah sure makes sense i guess peter travers of Rolling Stone. Big name. River City. Big fish. <laughs> Fraser and Buscemi are deadpan delights, and Sandler, opera man on SNL, is a red hot screen find. <laughs> red hot screen find. I believe this is an of the time review. You think so? If that's how they're referring to Sandler. What if it was opera man, comma, uncut gems? Oh. And those were his two credits. <laughs> User Jeff G, five out of five stars. Jeff George. All-star cast, legendary joke to exposition ratio. Caught a bad rap because most critics are cynical a-holes. Mm. User Catherine W, five out of five stars. Where did this movie go? My favorite Brendan Fraser movie by far and near its 30th anniversary and it's missing. 
Blu-ray copies go on eBay for over $250. So don't tell me this is a 50% audience rating. Where are my people? I mean, she's talking to us right now. Where's this movie at? Yeah. Hi, Catherine. That's a great question. Maid sent it to me, which was very nice. Legally, everything legal, quite above board. Quite legal, yeah. Traded you for a book. It was on Delta in-flight streaming. Oh. That's where it went. Take a flight and then listen to the rest of this podcast. They have it. Exclusive rights. I was flying back from Madison, Wisconsin two days ago, and I was like, well, all right, I'll queue it up. You know what? I've seen it somewhere recently. Yeah. I was on a Delta flight from New York to LA, and I definitely saw it there. And it's an A, so it's got to be one of the first four that you see. It's right at the top. Right up top. Delta Force. No. Pope. Blank user, five out of five. Best movie that any of the stars were ever in. And Steve Buscemi has been in a lot of excellent movies. Absolutely not. Note that the audience score is a lot higher than the critics rating. Go figure. Remind you that Steve Buscemi this same year was in Pulp Fiction. Every Tarantino and Coen Brothers movie <laughs> of the 90s. So no, I'm gonna go with no. Negative reviews. Stop being a pessimist. This tank is not half full. It's half empty. Dennis Schwartz of Dennis Schwartz Movie Reviews. Schwartz is strong in him. A dumb comedy. Yes. Felix Vasquez Jr. of Cinema Crazed. Everyone in the film has simply been better and funnier before. Before? Even Fraser. Before? Before. That's how you take the review over the top. Yeah. It'd be easier to say they've been funnier elsewhere. You say before. Opera Man. <laughs> Opera. TV Guide. Cowards. <laughs> Airheads commits the cardinal sin of satire. It's not sure what it's making fun of. I'm pretty sure they know. Yeah. Is it satire? I don't even think it is, but I think they were making fun of the music industry quite a bit. Yeah. Jeff Andrew of Time Out about airheads and for them too. Huh. Oh, God is ass. Janet Maslin of New York Times. Big fish. Oh, Maslin's hierarchy. <laughs> That's Zach's coworker. We may have pooped in the same bathroom. Oh my God. There should be. It's legitimately. <laughs> at the same time? No, not at the same time. That's ridiculous. You weren't spider pooping? They're individual bathrooms. You know, you can spider poop where you sort of drape each other's legs over the other. Ian, we've been friends for nine years. Yeah. I think I know what spider pooping is. Okay, that's my bad. I'm trying to figure out what Brendan Fraser was funnier in before Airheads. School ties? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Was Encino Man before this? Encino Man was two years before. I want to put School Ties in a top five most flattering portrayals of a Jewish guy by a non-Jew. Mm. Oh. I don't know what the other four are right now, but Brendan Fraser in School Ties is fully top five. That's a good movie. Adrian Brody? No, yeah, we got two of them. All right. Oh, Rachel Sennett. Mm, nice. And Shiva Baby. I feel stupid. Liam Neeson? No, the guy who plays Rocket the Raccoon on Whoa. The Oh, Bowl. Bradley Cooper. Whoa. Bradley Cooper. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, Bradley Cooper and Maestro for sure. Although he did put the schnoz on. That's tough, yeah. Which I think knocks him down a couple of pegs. It just knocks him down to five. Also, boring ass movie. Oh. You no, know, I said it. Boring as shit. Whoa, anti Semitic. Yeah. I don't know about that. I wouldn't know if I would call Maestro boring. It was boring. I don't know if I would call it a masterpiece or a Maestro piece. Oh. Mm. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The writer. Swimshirt T Club. It's T Club, <laughs> left eye. And Chile. <laughs> <laughs> Available everywhere June 11. <laughs> Janet Maslin said there should have been enough material for six sitcoms. Instead, there's not even enough for one movie. Not enough material? What is this? Being fat? T-shirt swim club everywhere June 11. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. No, every time you've got a comment on this movie. <laughs> We've been asked by our listeners to introduce ourselves when we talk because we sound too much alike. Oh, yeah, this is Zach here. So it's good if you give your credits, too, you know, just in case somebody gets confused. We should all have a different version of the title of Ian's book when we start talking. That way they'll know. Your listeners want you to talk like you're asking questions at a press conference, yep. like Ian Carmel, T-Shirt Swim Club. Exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> they can't tell the difference between my voice and Maze's voice. Some people told us that they couldn't tell the difference between me and David Borey's voice <laughs> on All Fantasy <laughs> Everything. How is that possible? <laughs> After that, I started invoicing Comedy Central for half of his check. <laughs> yeah, that one was me. That Seinfeld one was me. And then last review, Scott Weinberg of eFilmCritic.com. Do the voice? Nope. <laughs> it's pretty annoying when you cast a bunch of funny people in a movie that turns out this devoid of chuckles. 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 That's devastating. We'll get a Bean's first note, May's first note, Ian's first note. My first note after these messages, unless you're subscribed to the Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings, in which you get an ad free episode. Hello, listener. 
I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that we at Cinephobe love our pets. Zach and Boogie are inseparable. I've got two cats and a dog. And Amin is giving his best ass on performance to convince dog owners that he loves their pet. Hey, Noodle. Hey, boy. How you doing? And Noodle was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Which is why today's episode is sponsored by the ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program. Your pet is part of your family and you want the best for them no matter what. But vet bills can really add up. That's why you should check out pet insurance. And with ASPCA Pet Health Insurance, you can focus on the care your pet deserves and cover what matters most. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care they may need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program has been around for over 18 years, and they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, helping ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are. Because vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. It's simple. Use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive reimbursement for your eligible vet bills directly into your bank account. To explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash dings, D-I-N-G-S. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash dings. Again, that's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash dings. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. Hey, listener, it's your favorite Butcher Turn podcast producer, Mays, here to talk to you about Butcher Box. A not so wise man once said, It's not that hard, just chop, chop. Who knew that he was talking about pork chops from Butcher Box? It's not that hard. It's easy to get high quality meat and seafood you can trust delivered right to your doorstep. Free shipping, always a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing value. You get exactly what you need. Premium ingredients for your meals to feed your family. I know how it is. You go to the grocery store. You're stressed. You got a lot of food to get. And then you got to wait in line at the butcher counter. Maybe your butcher is a tall man with an attitude. I don't know. I've never experienced that, but maybe it happened to you. That's why I love ButcherBox. You've always got meat in the freezer or in the fridge. You're ready to cook at any time, and you're not going to find such high quality at such low prices anywhere else. So sign up for ButcherBox today by going to butcherbox.com slash dings, D-I-N-G-S, and use code dings at checkout to enjoy your choice of bone and chicken thighs, top sirloins, or salmon in every box for an entire year, plus $20 off. Again, that is butcherbox.com slash dings, and use code dings, D-I-N-G-S. Chop, chop. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Strange happenings are occurring in the world of Exandria. Slayed creatures and beasts from days of yore are returning to the land of the living, and it's up to a band of unlikely heroes to re-slay them. Welcome to the Re-Slayer's Take. Join Jasmine Bular, Jasmine Chung, Jasper Cartwright, and Caroline Lux alongside Game Masters Nick Williams and me, George Primavera, in this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition role-playing adventure through Critical Role's fantasy world of Exandria. But don't worry, you won't need to know the rules to follow this story. All you need to know is that nothing the players do is scripted or planned, and their fates are determined by their own cleverness and the roll of a 20-sided die. So what the heck are you waiting for? Adventure awaits in the Re-Slayers take. New episodes drop weekly on Mondays wherever you stream your podcasts. Hi folks. Let me see if I can sum up Midnight Burger in about 25 seconds. Really big monster! Zero irony. Pardon me, Gloria. Might my husband and I have a word? The radio is talking to me. So this is how it ends. Eaten by wolves in space. There's a pocket dimension in the deep freeze. This is the stupidest dystopia we've ever been to. What the hell is that? Because you're having a cigarette in 415 million BC. Where are we? Space. Can you narrow that down? The bad part? Ava. Yeah, that didn't work at all. At the nexus of all things, there is a diner. Look for Midnight Burger on your favorite podcasting app or just go to We Open at 6... 
Amin.com. Amin, what is your first note? Another movie I know nothing of, though I must say the cast is not encouraging. Maze? My first note, it's pretty weird that Ian did Airheads as the first All Fantasy Everything in September 2016. Mm -hmm. And here we are almost eight years later. Wow. To complete the circle. That's why Ian's on this episode. I gave him a, hey, we want to have you back. We're going to promote the book. He wanted to promote the book. I think we've done that flawlessly so far. I gave him a list and he said Airheads. And then he had the audacity to say, you know, that was the first All Fantasy Everything episode. Like I wasn't there. Listening to you and Sean O'Connor yep. was on it. Sergio Serna and Devin Faraci. Devin Faraci, who has since been canceled. Oh. But Sergio Serna, who has gone on to become a very successful comedy writer. Wait, what? Devin Faraci. I forgot what he did, but it was something untoward. Oh, really? Sexual assault allegations. Oh, yeah. supercharger. <laughs> Maybe it's in the appendix of Low T Swimmers Club. He's a member of the Low T <laughs> Swimmers Club, and we did not. He's unwelcome in any swim club. Yeah. That fella. <laughs> But he was on the first episode of All Fantasy Everything. And you guys drafted movies from either Brendan Fraser, Adam Sandler, or Steve Buscemi, right? Steve Buscemi's career. Heavy on the Steve Buscemi. Ian, do you have a first note about this movie? My first note, I guess, would be that I consider Airheads to be one of the all-time Comedy Central cable movies. Absolutely. My first note was I've probably seen this 50 times because it was on TV yes. constantly in the 90s. 50 times, probably over 300 different viewings. Yes. I've seen it 50 times total. Yes. I don't think I saw the first 20 minutes of this movie, the first 10 viewings. Oh, I thought this movie started in the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> for a long time. But I do think Comedy Central elevated this movie's esteem in my heart and soul. We've got some bad rock music, 90s ass intro with decibel levels, credits, drums, foot pedal, Guitar picks, pizza being eaten, record spinning. Oh, some good old stop motion animation. Yeah. I actually like stop motion animation. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. I like it a lot. Why wouldn't you be allowed to say that? I don't know. Cause it's like outdated and it's kind of cheesy now. Cause of woke. <laughs> Right, because of woke, yeah. It was canceled. It worked as a change of pace in these credits. I liked it. You know who doesn't hate stop motion animation? Aaron Rodgers. Harrison Butler. Butker. <laughs> Harrison Butler is somebody else. Oh, oh, oh. Butker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been calling him Harrison Butler all day long. It's Butker. The Butler did it. <laughs> That's a K in there. Who's Harrison Butler? Great question. Don't know. Ian, are you not familiar with Harrison Butker, the Kansas City Chiefs kicker, and his commencement speech that he gave. Well, I helped punch it up, so I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are really promoted the shit out of this book. You wrote for Nikki Glaser and you yeah. wrote for this, right? <laughs> I went right from Nikki Glaser's roast to punching up Harrison Butker. Before it, there was almost no mention of the kitchen <laughs> before I got my hands on it. Which really brought it home, I thought. That's a good note that you added. I thought so. I said, put a Taylor Swift reference in there. Well, let's mm -hmm. make it land with the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a knucklehead. Know your audience. You can't go over the top. They clapped. They loved it. Look, what he said, all the qualifiers, right? It's bad. But it's so funny to get choked up by your own misogyny. Yeah, that is. It's so funny. <laughs> but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. He's one of those famous uh, Georgia Tech alums, right? Yeah. Well, not the most famous one, because that'd be me. That'd be you? Yeah. And I'm the most famous Georgia Tech alum who did not play a sport at Georgia Tech. There's nobody else. Oh, interesting. I don't know if that's true. Look it up. I will right now. There's going to be a bunch of people like, oh, the CEO of Coca-Cola. You don't know who the fuck that guy is. Jeff Foxworthy went there, dude. <laughs> no, he didn't. Did he? <laughs> that's what it says on here. There's no chance. Name two. Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Jimmy Carter? <laughs> the president. He did not go to Georgia Tech. It's Georgia Tech. They never told us this. Your top five so far. You went based on they never told us. <laughs> Jimmy Carter? I think I would have learned that, you know? Jimmy Carter, the party starter, went to Georgia Tech. Uh-huh. That's what they call him. I almost think the two people who make you not the most famous alumni make you seem more famous. Because it's Jimmy Carter and Jeff Foxworthy and then you. Fuck, man. Yeah. And I think that's better company. I'm one of Portland State's most famous alumni. It's like me, Esperanza Spalding, and Amine. The big three. Amine? Amine El Hassan. Yeah. Hey. I don't know how to pronounce his name because I met him once and I said his name wrong to his face. 
and he corrected me. Oh, no. But you don't remember how you fucked it up? No, because it was such a traumatic experience. <laughs> it was awful. Okay, so I had been at the Emmys. So I was in a tuxedo, and then I had to go do a set at Brandon Wardell's show at this place called The Satellite. And I showed up sweaty, drunk, a little bit on cocaine, and in a tuxedo at my fattest. And I was waiting backstage. There was a minute where I was in the zone, and it would have been great. Brandon Wardell's ex-girlfriend went up and did a set that took like 45 minutes. So I was getting further and further away from the zone and I was already frazzled. The zone, the zone, <laughs> the zone, the cocaine booze zone of comedy. Yeah. And then Amine, Amine, whichever it was, came up and I was like, oh my God, you're from Portland too. And I was so excited and talking to him and I said his name wrong and he corrected me and it was so traumatic that now whichever way I say it, I'm convinced it's wrong. T-shirt swim club. Low T swimmers club. That was Ian talking. <laughs> All right. We got Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Riding a motorcycle down the street. We've got a radio DJ. Joe Mantegna. Called him Fat Tony the entire movie. I said he's going through tapes like the good old 20 CB DJ he is. KPPX Rebel Radio. Nutbags out of the wood pile. Since I am a trouble magnet, I have one thing to say to you bozos, and that is back off. Here's the Sons of Thunder from their debut album, Scrambled Eggs and Wobbly Legs. You're listening to Ian the Shock on the station with more hair, more flair, yet so debonair. KPPX. Rebel Radio. Oh, 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 oh. Did any of you ever do like a high school or a college radio show? No. You're looking at it. This is it. This will shock you. <laughs> I didn't do a lot in college. Zach was there for 15 minutes and he had a sandwich. I had a Subway sandwich and I left. I had a high school radio show. High school radio? High school radio. And we played like Nelly Furtado and early Maroon 5 demos and stuff like that. It was awful. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen Nelly Furtado recently? No. Yes. Oh, my God. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, now I know what that means. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, also give me Gnorm. Giant bobos. <laughs> Ian, have you ever seen a gnome named Norm? There's no chance. No one has. No, I've not seen a gnome named Norm. We've seen it and that's it. It's Anthony Michael Hall and a puppet. A gnome puppet? Send in the picture. Oh, God. <laughs> gnome named Norm. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. That's not what gnomes look like. Play the sound again, because that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Giant bobos. <laughs> and yes, he is ogling a woman. <laughs> he sure is, yeah. So the gnome is attracted to human women? Oh, yeah. Attracted to fucking everything. Everything. And thanks to the scene in this family movie, we know from the reaction of a woman that oh. the gnome has quite the hog on him. He's got a unit hanging. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cut to Palatine Records, which I definitely didn't type as... Palestine records the first time oh. as a autocorrect. Of course not. Oh. Brandon pulled up. He swapped out his leather jacket and helmet for a hat and a button up shirt. They leaves openings, walking in with the demo reel. Let me just say this to movies in the 90s. If anyone builds time travel technology, go back, let them know. We don't need sound effects for a guy putting something in his pocket. What are you talking about? <laughs> it made me so angry. Why? It makes like this little whistling noise. That's just good Foley work. No, that's not good Foley work. <laughs> That's bad Foley work. You're trying to eliminate more jobs from Hollywood at right now? In this climate? When it's harder to work in this town than ever? Well, to be clear, I'm trying to eliminate jobs in 1993 or whatever. Well, that's true. Actually, we had plenty of them back then. Yeah. You guys should get a Foley artist for this podcast, actually. That's me. That's what I do. Yeah, it's me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working hard over here. I'm making all these sounds with my bare hands. It's going great. I'm not even here. This is Anthony Mays hitting a series of complex buttons. It took him over three years. I've been taking samples of all fantasy everything, and I have constructed this version of Ian for this podcast episode. Wait till you hear the slurs that are going to come out of Ian. Ian's mouth. It's really aggressive. I am a virulent and powerful racist. He sneaks into the elevator, which I hate this in movies. I know it just moves the plot along, yeah. but I hate that it doesn't trigger the doors opening in the elevator. Same note too, bro. I always hate that. The sensors don't detect them and reopen? Yeah. If you slid into closing doors of an elevator, they would then open back up. Oh. But that doesn't happen in movies and TV shows. The idea of the elevator doors being the last security wall between you and someone chasing you. Yeah. Oh, I just got an elevator. Shit. He's in the elevator. Doesn't happen in real life. Some manager is pumping up four guys in cat in the hat hats, tie dye shirts, 
denim vests and crazy pants. Let's show them who the horsemen are, fellas. Be wild. Be as wild as you want. If you feel like wetting yourself, go with it, okay? Anarchy's good. They like anarchy, okay? We also get the exposition from the security guard who says, it's that guy in the delivery uniform for the beginning of the movie. He's a repeat offender. <laughs> He's sneaking in past the receptionist who recognizes him. He's creeping around avoiding security guards. He's ducking behind walls. He's kind of ass off sneaking around. He sees Judd Nelson to introduce himself. Whoa, dude, my name's Chaz. My band cut an incredibly sweet demo. And the soul patch glued to Judd Nelson's chin is a felony. CT5 worst facial hair. It's intentionally bad, but man, that is a rough situation right there. Also, the suit that he has on, not his size. Mm. He's going to throw that out there. Judd Nelson needs to be firing on 10 out of 10 cylinders to look attractive. It doesn't take a whole lot to get him down to character actor. He kissed the idea of movie star for a while, right? After Breakfast Club? Yeah, I mean, he's a big member of the Brat Pack, but attractive, I wouldn't go that far at all. New Jack City? I think Judd had a minute where he was kind of good looking, but really was just out in that stratosphere for like half of a second before he fell back in. Yeah, I agree with that. Kiss the sun. I think you should hear it. Put a shine in your stinger. What? Yeah. This is the real thing, man. This is rock and roll. None of the gimmicky stuff, but Judd can't take it because it's unsolicited material and lawyers would have a fit. It's unsolicited. We've been trying to get solicited. Well, I can't take it. Maybe a gimmick would help. Cream always rises. It's only a matter of time because cream always rises to the yeah, top. Yeah, dude, and you have so much cream inside you, man. Yeah. And it's always getting up in, in Dennis's face. Dennis hates my he cream. He hates that, dude. Because he, he, it's like, it's all, all it's all over him. I'm and always, he can smell it on him and yeah. it drives him nuts. Yeah. Okay, super duper. Thanks. He closed the door in Chaz's face. Security guard grabs him. You again. Louis Pinnock for the security guard. <laughs> He's not quite reminiscent, but he's definitely flying close to that. You can always tell when a black guy does that voice. Do you think people actually get thrown to the curb like this in real life? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time? All the time. We had a security gate, and I never saw anyone hucked out. No? Just people push through the gate. So did people try to, like, get on the lot? Of course. All the time. No, but, like, forcefully, I mean. We had people try to sneak through, get through gates, especially when, like, BTS or One Direction was on. You'd have oh, cars pull up to the gates. Yeah. One time, people were mad at us and had a petition that they brought to the gates but it was in the middle of July when we were off for the summer. <laughs> nice. They showed up every day. They walked up to the security guard. And they're like, we demand to be let in. And the security guard was like, no. Well, can we leave these letters for you to give him? And he was like, no. <laughs> so then they just put it down on the ground in front of it, walked away. And we're like, well, we did it. So it's actually pretty hard to sneak into a studio. Cut to Chaz sitting on the couch watching music videos shirtless and in jeans. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a weird combo. The anti Zach Harper. Yeah. Also, barbed wire tattoo on his arm. 20 CB. Tom Gugliotta. Repeat offender. Same though, too, Mace. I said repeat offender. <laughs> his girlfriend gets home. Yeah, that's how her day is. She starts complaining about Barry, a tremendous asshole. She asks if he mailed the rent. He says, you didn't leave me a stamp. Classic voiced. Oh, I love it. That's an a mean move. She drops her skirt, revealing a 20 CB leotard. And she wonders what happened to her makeup. It fell in the toilet. That's not all she revealed. Oh, boy. And I quote, zero cheeks and the longest lower back ever. Oh, boy. It just kept <laughs> going and going. Oh, boy. Who are you quoting? himself yeah oh god <laughs> his own notes <laughs> his own notes yep. low t swimmers club yep <laughs> sometimes you know i'll read my notes and it'll be like someone else wrote them great great so you're just referring to something you can't get in trouble it's called alcohol mm -hmm. i was imbibing a little bit when i was <laughs> yeah i'll buy that the late 80s and the early 90s this was a big shane torres stable the long butt mm. and he would call it the coke butt the cocaine butt oh. and i think that's actually a pretty Wait, good is that where it came from is that what coke does to you that's what he would call it i mean Cocaine makes you not want to eat a lot of the time. So I do think that is a cocaine butt. Okay. Well, I'll tell you right now, her reactions to everything he says, definitely not a cocaine type reaction. Oh boy. Very even keeled and measured yeah. every time. We've got a lot of high quality insults being thrown around in this movie. You ruined my makeup, you butt. He's like, you know what I've been through today? She says, I'm guessing you woke up when the sun was warm, rode your Harley up and down Melrose, impressing all the 15-year-old girls. I said, easy, easy Drake. Easy, Maze. I said, Drake. Oh. Topical. Was it anymore? Well, no, it was maybe a month and a half ago. Notice that Frazier never denies. Why would I do that? I don't fucking, 15-year-old girls, come on, don't be ridiculous. Never denies that. He just says, yeah, I actually went to Palestine Records. Nope. And nope. she, she caught, oh. nope, nope. <laughs> 
No. I'm quoting my notes here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Autocorrect. She sure is easy to please. Yeah. Calm down real quick. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, she's excited for his career. Until he mentions that they didn't actually listen to the music. I said, don't tell her the truth, you dumb asshole. Just be like they liked it and, you know, want to see more or whatever. But that's not honest. But we need a gimmick because that's the takeaway. He's a bad liar. He's looking for empathy. Yeah. He's in his relationship. He's seeking comfort. He's seeking empathy. And he's left wanting. He knows who he's dating. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's true. Jesus. I mean, I'm just saying. She's providing for him. Yeah. He's the bad person in this relationship. He's a deadbeat who sits around on the couch. Can't even mail rent. She is a cult. He probably smells awful he's hot though you're dating an experience right you're dating a rock star he is hot yes she's hot too yeah but he's brendan fraser hot you know he's got a butt (laughs) he does he's got a butt thank god someone does yeah yeah this whole this is like where riffs you take a riff here and it slam it right into a brick wall where it explodes and dies Mm -hmm. i can't believe you guys don't think that she's an awful person She's horrible. She's abusive. She's abusive. At this point, she hasn't done anything wrong. I mean, all right. She got home from work. Okay. And he couldn't even mail the rent. (laughs) Okay. She didn't leave him a stamp. Yeah. Where was he supposed to get a stamp from? (laughs) I don't know. The post office? What age were you where you knew where to buy stamps? Eight? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, this is also the point in time where you needed stamps every day, everywhere, all the time. This is a stamp heavy era. You could get them from the supermarket. Yeah. Remember like when you check out there and said, do you need stamps? The unhoused gentlemen passing them out on the streets. It was everywhere. But in his defense, he's busy, man. He's trying to make this dream happen. He's not. He was at Palestine Records. Nope. <laughs> I'm doing this for us. Come on, babe. Once I make it, you've got a free ride. She says... I want to live the life, too. I said, bitch, do you sing? Do you play an instrument? Jesus. I'm just saying, like, at this point now, I'm getting upset. Look what my notes are. Your notes are, (laughs) yes, not you. Whoever wrote your notes. This is my job. Trying managers, record execs, club owners. That's hard work. You get to sit in a nice office all day smoking and drinking coffee. Being able to smoke in your office is 20th century for sure. He's not lying. Ian, how many people think that your your life is just easy, be funny, and that's it? Like, it's work, man. I think his life is easy. Harper does. I tell people that every day. <laughs> it's hard to quantify what you do as work, even though it does drain you. And for the first 10 years, it doesn't really pay or go anywhere. Right. Anyone who has stayed with a comedian or a musician or anyone or a basketball analyst or a basketball analyst until they make it that person is maybe delusional to be honest <laughs> very you gotta be yeah that's how this shit works you kind of have to be that's why she's got her head screwed on the right way eventually screwed on the right way so good that she headbutts him right in the face this is bullshit and he says oh my snout What? Totally appropriate response. (laughs) She throws the demo at him. I hate you. You are nobody and you're never going to be anybody. Oh, that's tough. Rude. He wrote the song for her. She says it was before they even met. She kicks him in the shin. She's throwing him out. She kicked him in the dick. I mean, you wondered if they throw people out of a office or security does. Do people actually throw your shit off a balcony? I saw that it was pre-pandemic, but I saw in like 2018, 2019 in West Hollywood, someone throwing shit off a balcony. I done seen it too. I've seen it happen. Ian did it to my stuff and he didn't even live there. It was weird. No, I broke in and I tossed it on the ground. But I lived on the first floor and he took it to the apartment above. I did. I broke into two. I actually spent three years in prison because of it. (laughs) He did, yeah. Two different counts of breaking and entering. Yeah. Is that where you went? And then we met. It was shortly thereafter. You're like, where do I know you from? (laughs) In prison? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I always knew you were a loser. This is uncontrollable rage, right? For what? She's got some anger issues. Some anger issues. Issues. <laughs> She's hot. She can do it. That's how the world works, man. No, oh, man. He fires up his Harley and rides away. Rides off. Cut to a toy store. Steve Buscemi works there. This is a great look for Steve Buscemi. Oh, it's a fantastic look for him. The hair, facial hair combo. He says, She booed you again. What a bitch. I mean, that it happened. <laughs> Same note, too. Good pivot. Hey, don't mean squat, man. She's going to be Jones in six months from now when we're on the cover of Rip Magazine looking all starts playing air bass and flexing. Do people still do air guitar? Yes. There's a commercial with air guitar. What? No flex zone? Which one? No, no. It's the rock star one where it's like actual (laughs) rock stars in the commercial. Oh, yeah. And they're upset. Was Shea Gilgis Alexander and Chet Holmgren? Zach doesn't remember any other commercials. (laughs) That's the only two I know. A family playing Jenga and Chet outside a hotel. Those are the only two commercials. The way Steve Buscemi looks in this movie is extremely back in Los Angeles. Oh, yes, it is. On the east side of L.A., there are a lot of 
wonderful women having their lives ruined by dudes who look exactly like how Steve Buscemi looks in this movie right now. Mm -hmm. They're at Zebulon doing cocaine while a noise rock band plays. Six different Steve Buscemi's are there with like little <laughs> geometric shaped tattoos on their arms and knuckles. Mm -hmm. Let everyone know this is back and it's coming for you too. If it ever left, but not any geometric shapes you've seen before. No, no, it's a diamond with an arrow through it. And then like two dash. It's real weird. It means nothing other than I don't have a personality and I've decided to purchase one from a tattoo artist. Yep. That's why I wear sleeves now. Mm -hmm. Some guy tells him he's supposed to clean some stuff up. He leaves. Zachary tells him that old man Covington, old man Covington. That's bad writing. That's not only bad writing. That's 20 CB writing. Adam Sandler's in a crop top. Yo. From Opera Man? Waiting outside. Drumming. This is such a crazy Adam Sandler look. He's so skinny. He's got the midriff showing, the puka shell necklace. How has he aged the best out of all three of these guys? I mean, yeah, I guess he has. He has. I'm telling you. Well, he's got the most money. I think Buscemi's probably aged better because he looked older to begin with. Well, he looks haggard. He looks like he's dying. <laughs> Jesus. Well, he's also older. A lot older. I don't think Sandler's necessarily aged well. He's less fat than Brennan Fraser. Just compared to the other two. Sandler has done the brilliant thing of never trying. Right. From the minute we've known him as a public figure, he's made being a slob his entire brand. Yeah. So you can't really age out of being a slob. All he can do is look progressively more comfortable until he's dead. One of the worst things anyone's ever said to me was that you're dressed like Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah, that's tough. That hurt. Yeah. Sandler core is a whole movement now, though. There's also it's like it girls <laughs> wearing and one basketball shorts. I swear to God, Google Sandler core. Airheads is the fashion trend <laughs> nexus for all of 2024. <laughs> to the listener at home, don't Google Sandler core. Don't Google do Sandler core. Yes. <laughs> don't do it. Your algorithm's going to get real fucked up. Adam Sandler is a fashion sensation on TikTok. Sandler core is about simplicity, oh comfort, God. and sizing way up no matter the occasion. I'm saying Adam Sandler is out here shaping the culture. It's him and Buscemi. Buy Sandler core swim club. It's in one <laughs> bookstore. You got to find it yourself. You have to find it. There's one copy and June 39th. Martin Shkreli bought it. Yes. <laughs> you got to fight him to the death, <laughs> but he's hopped up on all his million dollar drugs. Yeah. So you're fucked. Didn't he go to jail? Yeah. And he's been doing knuckle pushups the whole time, dude. It's gotten worse for everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never stopped. <laughs> knuckle bris. He's giving people oh, knuckle bris. <laughs> That's how you can do the knuckle bris. You got to do the knuckle pushups in prison. Him and Kevin Lover out here giving knuckle brisses. He's good. He's going to move in with them. Chad's going to move in with them. We get some life lessons saying things are going to start happening to us. He says, that's just it. That's what you guys think. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. You got to make it happen. Message. How many practices have you missed? Because you're cleaning up Stiff's pools. Mm. He has a job. Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't have a job. Don't job shame him. And in case you didn't know what that job was, it's on his beanie. And his van. Hips pool cleaning. Rex says, get in the truck, dingus. And got to... Pay attention to this. 20 CB slang is the horseman for this movie because yeah. there's some that I remember and there's some I've never heard. I said 20 CB gibberish because I don't believe any of this was actual slang. Dingleberries was a slang. Porkins a slang. Dingus is a slang. Absolutely. But there's one where he's like, you fart munch, blah, blah. When they start conjuncting. I don't know. It's not real. Conjuncting conjunctivitis. From a fart munch. This might be a two America situation. That's like how David Simon tweets right now. There's people out there who <laughs> will just jam two insults together. Yeah. It's very Milady Epic Bacon Core. You know what I mean? To make it like an overly erudite <laughs> insult kind of thing. You're on a run right now. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm out here, dude. So many cores. <laughs> All your cores. <laughs> <laughs> Giving y'all a core workout on this episode. Uh, they pull into a parking lot. They're unloading. Rex says Tommy Lee hustled. That's why he gets to live in the hills and pork Heather Locklear. Oh, man. What a time. Pork. Go to TV. Were they trying to avoid a hard R rating by saying pork instead of fuck? Yeah, I think so. PG-13. Yeah. That specific phrase, not just the word pork, but porking Heather Locklear. That's what made me laugh uncontrollably. Golden dumpster. <laughs> The idea that Heather Locklear was the hottest woman right now, right? According to Chaz, once you make it, there are chicks with breast implants who pick out your stage clothes. And then Pip sneezes all over Rex. Wants him to say gazoon tight. They get an apartment. It's a real piece of shit. Permanently set up for band practice. There's a pizza slice sitting on the stove. Disgusting. Honey, I'm home. That's 20th century, bitch. I've lived in some disgusting places before, but never like that. Well, you weren't in a band. The amp is... 
bigger than anything else in the entire room. That's true. Also, Steve Buscemi steals everything from this toy store. Oh, man, I miss water guns. You miss water guns? Yeah. He's got these cool, real-looking water guns. I was a big water gun guy. We got a big shipment at the Late Late Show of water guns sent from Super Soaker once because they want you to talk about them on air. Yeah. So we had, like, a huge water fight complete with, I'm not going to say who, but one of the employees having a mental breakdown no. because he got wet and was really upset. Not like a full mental breakdown, like he had to be institutionalized. Okay. But you know, they're like, I wasn't supposed to get wet today. You know, like the kid back in the day, he was like, my mom said I couldn't get this shirt wet. I had a dollar. It was like a kid having the adult version of that at our workplace water fight. He wasn't in the t-shirt swim club. No, he was not. <laughs> no, he was not. Out June 11th. June 11th. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he had PTSD from being in Iraq or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the slow music. Ooh, you know. He found a depleted uranium super soaker and he took out 36 yes. of his co-workers <laughs> with it. Yeah. He gives a crash test dummy doll to Sandler, who loves it. He then starts making that in a stuffed pig 69. Yeah. After kissing it himself. Some important exposition from Rex that these guns are discontinued because they look too real. Yeah. It's real. Puts pepper sauce in it. Threatens to use it on the Hollywood Boulevard trash. You don't respect the boulevard and you don't respect the fans. Look, he's got good aim with that thing because he nails Stretch Armstrong right in the face. This was when I discovered that Hollywood Boulevard has always been a shithole. Yeah. I thought this was a development of the... 21st century. No, 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 no. It's always been homeless people and disgusting. I mean, what? Maybe 1950s. It was nice. Ian, when's the last time you went to Hollywood Boulevard not for work? Oh, (laughs) I guess anytime I go to Musso and Frank's for dinner. Sure. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. My birthday would have been the last time. Also, isn't that where Dave and Buster's is? Not that I've been to a Dave and Buster's recently, but I would. So I... Went on a date at that David, a first date, her idea. A date in Busters? A date in Busters. And did you bust her? Yes. Oh. Yeah, eventually, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I actually forgot. For a second. She said, let's go to the one on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, because she, apparently she has a friend that is a manager there or something like that. I don't know. She hooked up? So we got to like play for free and all this shit, uh-huh. which was cool, but... I mean, I'm just trying to imagine the characters. The little kids running around. I don't like dates where kids are running around, you know? Oh, you know about kids... I'm thinking about the type of people because a couple of times I had to say it, that W. Yeah. And it's the weirdest W I've ever been in in my life. Yeah. Because the people in the lobby are fucking strange characters. Yeah. And so I'm trying to think about what kind of person would go to Dave and Buster's on Hollywood Boulevard. Those people went from the lobby to the Dave and Buster's back to the lobby. You got a lot of weird Belgian tourists, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. People who thought you were supposed to go check out Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. You also have the kind of people who are like, I got to go to Dave and Buster's because my favorite thing in life is to play this version of Dance Dance Revolution that mm-hmm. came out in 2024. That's the one, yeah. The new one, this shit. It detects the amount of weight you put on your heel as opposed to the front of your foot. <laughs> right. And now you have to sort of foster an environment of sex around those people in their bare feet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Difficult. And I did. You did. Congratulations. <laughs> (laughs) But you beat that game on the highest level of difficulty. I beat that game all right. We're at a record release party at the Whiskey, Sons of Thunder, Ian the Shark. He is a mean, the podcaster, because he hates his audience. He hates his fans. He's talking shit to them constantly. Save no two, bro. (laughs) He's ass off, though. Joe Montana is fantastic at this. Shimmy can't believe it. Didn't we blow these queefs off the stage at Shea Bang six months ago? What a sentence. (laughs) Ian says, why don't all you little idiots press your face against the speakers and blow your brains out? That's tough. There's an army of pink bikini bottomed Hawaii. Hawaiian Tropic Girls. Oh which my God. Is very 20 CB. I fucking love Michael McKeon. I love him too. I love him in everything. Ponytail Michael McKean. Beautiful. We got Ian the Shark pouring beer into a Pepto Bismol bottle. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I laughed. What is the most depraved cocktail you've made yourself? Because I have done booze and Pedialyte at an attempt to beat the system. Oh, absolutely. Define depraved. I didn't have any sugar or simple syrup. Yeah. I made myself an old fashioned with the powdered Pedialyte instead <laughs> thinking like, you know what? I'm going to fucking galaxy brain this. It was awful. Oh. And guess what? It made it worse. <laughs> yeah. It made it worse. You made a cocktail using fucking the hellfires to forge it. <laughs> Of course it was worse. <laughs> the first time I ever had White Claw, I did not know that it was spiked. So I used it as 
chaser or to mix with my vodka. Oh. So I had vodka White Claws for like the first maybe six or seven times I had White Claw. Plus an upper White Claw. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess most of the pray will be vodka Coke. Oh, oh God. Oh. It's fucking gross. And I talked to someone who was like, why? Why is that gross? It's just alcohol and Coke. No, it's gross. It's just gross, man. It doesn't work like that. Mm -mm. You got to go clear with clear and brown with brown. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm a strict alcohol segregationist. I am an alcohol segregationist. Well, there's our breakout clip. Avowed. Avowed. <laughs> <laughs> t-shirt swim club, June 11th. Buy it. As long as you keep your white t-shirts with your white t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do that in more of a Shane Torres voice. Why did you do a Shane Torres? Thing? As long as you keep your white t-shirts with your white t-shirts, it's fine. Don't buy his butt. <laughs> I'm just saying it's gross. Like tequila and Coke is also disgusting, right? But a tequila Sprite, for some reason that works. I don't like Sprite with a thing. I used to. Now I can't drink Sprite with anything. It's just too sweet. Yeah. I mean, that's just getting older. That's just us. Yeah. Maze, I feel like you've brewed your own beer before. Never brewed my own beer. Oh, okay. It was literally just whatever was around. <laughs> For the most part. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely try to MacGyver together some drinks. Like Sunny D and any alcohol is a terrible fucking decision, but I'm sure oh, I've that's done it. Terrible. <laughs> that's bad. Bacardi Limon and oh, Stop my. there. Stop there. Dr. Pepper. Oh. Whatever the fuck you can get your hands on. It's bad. There's nothing you can mix Bacardi Limon with. <laughs> <laughs> make it a good drink. I did not orbits like Mondo or whatever that. Oh, Fruitopia. 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 Oh. Fruitopia. oh my God. I did Fruitopia and what's that alcohol that's only legal in some states? Everclear? Everclear. Everclear. Everclear and Fruitopia, freshman year of college. Oh, my God. We sat around in a circle, not even mixed, <laughs> just passing around the Everclear and then immediately following it with Fruitopia. How are you alive? Sitting in a circle. Well, it explains why I couldn't remember the names of either of those drinks. But <laughs> dude, Nick Mampay was there. We just sat in a circle drinking it. Horrifying. I'll buy that he was there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> in the middle of that circle, he is at one of these days. I'm going to do me a podcast. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. What if we recorded this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. They're making fun of the Sons of Thunder dress. Milo sends two girls to get them drinks. There's lots of hooting and hollering in the crowd. And Rex goes, ooh, serious bumper. Nice roundy. Now that I have not heard. Bumper? I think they made that one up. Yeah. Chaz wants to get the song played on the radio so they can get an album cut to them in the van. Chaz says they'll be golden if they get to play the tape. Sandler doesn't think it's going to happen. He gets reminiscent about Dover Gray who would oh. blow bong hits in his iguana's face and try to make the thing watch cartoons with him. I thought he said Doper Greg. That's what I had too. Maybe. This is the beauty of not having closed captioning for this movie. <laughs> I have some questionable transcriptions here. Should have watched it on Delta. Won a radio giveaway, went down to the station, they wouldn't let him in. So that's his exposition that they have security at the radio station, which doesn't come into play, really. Rex threatens to shove the Uzi in someone's face. If they give him any static, he shoots a pip. He then says, yeah, remember that fat kid on hard copy who had a toy gun? No, I don't. Cop zapped him with a taser until he went bald. Then he sued him for a million bucks when his pubes didn't grow in. Still got no hair on his balls, man. This is where I got to ask, is reminiscent a horseman? Yeah, for sure. Remember when that fat kid was hard? I just hear his voice in my head. The receptionist is playing a Game Gear. Oh, yeah. Oh. 20 CB, baby. Dude, I tried so hard to remember what the fuck that shit was called. It was a Sega Game Boy, basically, right? Yeah. But it sucked down batteries. Oh, my God. Like I was sucking down Fruitopia. It <laughs> <laughs> I remember other kids having that. I never had one. Dude, it's literally the only time in my life where I peeked at my Christmas gift Ooh. before Christmas. I saw where my parents were keeping it. I went, looked, saw it, got so excited. I'm like, fucking Game Gear, this is crazy. This is all I wanted, right? But then I had to wait. And then you open on Christmas morning. There's no surprise. And I remember thinking, I'll never do that again. Oh, very nice. This is the origin story of why Zach doesn't like trailers. I don't like trailers. They give too much away. Wow. Yeah. It all dates to that Christmas morning. Yep. <laughs> game Gear. And then you played 20 minutes of Echo the Dolphin until your Game Gear died. <laughs> and then my parents said, we can't afford these batteries. Go buy some fucking Fruitopia. <laughs> that was the original in-app purchase batteries. Oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, by the way, Fruitopia is still available in Canada. Road trip. All right. Drake loses again. <laughs> they pull up to KPPX. She doesn't notice them on the security camera because she's gaming. The door's locked. So Rex is going to use Pip's bank card and PIN number. Give me your credit card. Credit card. Yeah, credit, credit card. card. Plan B's got a credit card in it. Come on. Your plan sucks. He's secretive. He punches it in and then it eats his card. Next idea is to blow soda in the slot and short circuit it. Pip and Rex start slapping and fighting each other. Rex mocks him for not wearing pants and calls his underwear fudgies. 
Because he poops in them. Yeah. Skid marks. It's not true. He's making this up. Chaz has him shut up, tells Pip to stay there. They climb up a ladder to get on the roof. Not before he slaps him, which I laughed at. Pip is kneeling in front of the door. Door opens right in his face. This woman can't believe she did that. She runs and gets him a bag of ice very quickly, by the way. 20 CB with the sandwich bag full of ice cubes. No, that's still in effect. No, people have ice packs now or no. peas or whatever. Would they have peas? Not they didn't have peas in the 90s. Is that what you're saying? Not frozen. There weren't frozen peas until after 9 11. <laughs> Look it up. No peas in the 90s. It was Obama. Obama allowed frozen peas, I think. That was a first term thing. Yeah. Hand peas before that. Yeah. He ran on, I'll have frozen peas and euthanasia in every single home. She's stammering and we get a nice sweet Annie. situation between Susie and Pip. No, not a lot of tension there. There's absolute tension there. All she wants to do is fuck and all he wants to do is fuck. There's absolute tension there. I would say that's not all he wants to do. Oh, <laughs> He's got the mind of a child, you see. Yeah, Pip, I think he has to be coaxed out a little bit. But then he's ready to go. Oh, yeah. Coked out? Coaxed. Coaxed with an X. Coked out. I mean, coked out his mind. Really? I think the inspiration for Emma Stone in Poor Things was Pip. Yeah. It's learning. <laughs> That's the origin story, yeah. San LaCour. <laughs> yeah, hard San LaCour. As she walks back in, they drop the satchel down from the roof. It catches on the door latch or on the top of the door. God forbid Pip catch the door with his hands right there. That's a pretty clever move. Yeah. Pretty good timing. You're already on the roof. They're walking around the station. You can hear Ian the shark. Michael Richards is in a office with Michael McKeon. He has a crazy mustache. Yes. A crazy mustache. Kramer's reviewing paperwork. Milo needs him to come in tomorrow. Kramer's got an itching. It could be hemorrhoids. Milo doesn't want to hear about it. Kramer made a proctologist appointment and Milo says... So you're going to leave me high and dry, huh? Oh, that's a nice team manager. Very office space Lumberg. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in on Saturday. And Sunday. The proctologist joke reference, that's the laziest writing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, this really worked out for this guy on this really popular show. We should work in like the same bit right here. They're going to fire everybody. But it requires a certain level of delicacy. Chaz and them boys walk in the room with Ian the Shark. They wave. Hey. I think Rex is just like, hey, we're a band. Oh, of course. The Partridge family. Which one of you is Lori? Reference. They give a Doc Rivers press conference laugh. Ha. He says, get out. They come to talk about their demo. Want to be set up like the Sons of Thunder. Ian the Shark wants to know how they got in. They had to break in. Rex, you got this place sealed up like a dolphin's butt. Watertight. This is him hating his job, right? Ian? Yeah, this guy is checked out. I think it's him hating his job and also hating the sort of corporate nature. He feels that encroaching corporate nature getting it away from the spirit of rock and roll. Yeah. And he's like, oh, here it is, an actual rock and roll moment. It actually feels oh. unanticipated and spine tingling. I think he likes that. I think that's right. I took it as the opposite. I thought that he hates his job, but look at these assholes. You know what? Let's fuck this thing really up and put this on air. See how stupid these guys sound. I think it might be a little column A, a little column B. Yeah. I think there's some mixture there. It's not like we're segregating Fruitopia and Everclear. Yeah. We're putting them together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See what happens. Ian turns the mic on, flips it around to them, and expositions what happened. That's about the slow and skinny of it. And um, what sound are you uh, mega stars of the future hip to? What is your musical vibe? Well, well we, we ain't that's trash. That's a good question. We could play anything. I don't know. slap bass noise either. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like, like a power, power slot. slot. Power slot. We don't like to limit ourselves to labels. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's always some meats banker out there who always wants to lump you together with all the other long-haired buttholes. But that's just one of the things that we are struggling against. I'm telling you, it is tough. This guy knows. I got booted out of Palatine Records. My girlfriend kicks me out of the apartment. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to conjure up the kind of woman who would go out with you. Kayla walks by radio right when they're talking about her, shakes her head and walks away. Chaz is now using this as free therapy. Do they say that their style is power slob? Slop. I love the way they describe that. Oh, slop. Got it. That's a golden dumpster for me is them trying to define their musical vibe. Fat Tony is ass off and drinking on air, which I greatly <laughs> yes. appreciated and enjoyed. Yeah, we know. Guys says, I screwed up. She's been there for me practically from the beginning. Let her down. Still want us to be tight. Milo storms in, wonders if they're still on air. They see the on air sign lit up. Yeah, now they get excited. They start chittering. Milo warns these morons off the air. I'm warning you. He's up, Grunty. Somebody gave you a break once, even though you're a goon. 
He wants to make this an open forum. Let's hear him out. Go ahead, Conan. Ah, Explain to Milo. Conan month. Why we should play your time. When he's describing his girl, he says she's actually pretty cool. And I said, no, she isn't. Good clarification. She is. She's been funding his life, funding his dream. No, yep. that doesn't make her pretty cool, though. Like, she could be an awesome person, but she's not cool. Not cool. I don't know. She's got a leopard unitard or whatever that was. Which is pretty cool. Especially in 94. Woo! That long coconut. I love the way Sandler says goon here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though you're a goon. Goon. <laughs> there's something about it. Well, that word just has some texture to it. Chaz says, I'm not pulling putt, I think. Yeah, I didn't know what that was. Pulling butt. Pulling butt? I thought it was pulling butt. Oh. Well, he is pulling butt. No, he's not. <laughs> Cocaine butt. Every okay. chance he gets. <laughs> I've seen yeah, zero. Help that. My entire life force is on this tape, and I don't know what else to say. Come on, man. Can you just give us a shot? Milo says you're on thin ice, Ian. You're not untouchable. You think you are, but you're not. Yeah, Ian. I've said the same thing to Ian every day. <laughs> it's the fuel I put in my gas tank. If you would have taken a clip of Brendan Fraser saying... I put my entire life force on this tape, paused it, broke the fourth wall and said to the theater or to the people watching at home on Comedy Central, this man will win a Best Actor Oscar one day. I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking nuts. It's nuts. I never saw The Whale because fuck that. But Yeah, I didn't see it either. Yeah. 13 year old me, see this on Comedy Central, he breaks the fourth wall and someone says, that dude's winning an Oscar someday. I'll be like, Fuck yeah, he is. Probably 10. For airheads? For this, probably, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This is what I'm imagining. That Ian is the guy who breaks the fourth wall and tells the audience. And then someone else comes up in front of Ian and turns around and breaks that fourth wall and says, and that guy, he's going to win Emmys. <laughs> he's going to win an Emmy. He's got a stamp special. He's got a book. He's got a book. We don't know the name of it, but he's got a book. It's called Hot <laughs> Shawarma Barbecue Club. <laughs> 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 it's out on Christmas. He's a big Catholic. It's coming out on Christmas. Audiobook coming out on Palestine Records. That's oh, right. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Tune in. Nope, nope. <laughs> Too far. Milo goes to grab Chaz, grabs his arm. He says, let's go. Chaz shakes him off easily. Buscemi walks over, says, you want to get physical with me? Tough guy talk. In what world is Buscemi more physically intimidating than this Adonis? But I think that's the thing. I'll tell you what world... The crazy eyes world, man. Crazy CT5 eyes. CT5 crazy eyes on Buscemi. And a small guy getting in your face like that, you know something can go down. Yeah. That's the thing. He kind of looks like Norm <laughs> in this picture. God, I, no. Look at the first picture that Zach sent us and now compare the two. You know what? You know I don't like <laughs> agreeing with the meme. Uh, That's not the worst comparison he's ever made. Come on, man. Does that mean Norm's <laughs> white? What does that mean? Which Norm? Powell? No. <laughs> no. No, the gnome. Oh, the gnome. I do love that Ian has been Norm Powell mode at all times. Oh, my God. Listen, you shaved ape. I could make a phone call and have you picking up garbage on the freeway for the rest of the decade. That implies he has some sort of unique power. That's just calling the cops. They broke in. <laughs> Anyone could do that. Anyone has that power. You're not going to call the cops? You just call the cops and you're picking up trash. You want to get smart with me? Try it. I will not be pushed around by Hollywood Boulevard trash like you. You don't respect the boulevard and you don't respect the fans. That is a triggering comment because remember, he talked about Hollywood trash. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's just good writing. This is one of the best. You think you're better than me? I've ever heard in a movie. I'm trash. What do you think? You're better than me? Huh? Oh, he's got a gun. He's got a gun. He pulls out a gun, the water gun, and you know what else pulls out? No, the no. plane from the terminal. Four, three, two, one. Hold on to your butts. Boys. What do you mean, not yet? No, no this is plot lift off. We don't have plot lift off yet. I knew you guys would get this wrong. When he goes, hey, stop squirming, pussy. I'll fill your face up full of lead. You'll be shit bullets for a week, you no dick loser. Which is all heard as a disembodied voice by Kramer eating a hot dog in the kitchenette. That's plot lift off, Zach. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Chevy tells Chaz to join him, so he grabs the other gun out of the bag. He says, I know you would have been cool, but then this penis had to step in. I said, oh, the penis system. Yes. Yeah. Shut up, dick smoke. That's a good one. Yeah. 90s gibberish slang. What the fuck does any of this mean? What does dick smoke mean? It's just two words. Yeah, it's just two words. It means you smoke dicks. No, but it's not dick smoker. It's dick smoke. No, the smoke that comes out of one's dick. It's the comedy K. 
where it's like, it doesn't really matter what you're saying as long as that word is plosive mm -hmm. and has impact, you know? Dick smoke, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Dick cheese is one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, we'll get to that. Chaz is ranting now. He says, you think because you have some big job that you know something wrong. You got it wrong. <laughs> you got your Hagar slacks and your stylish little ponytail. Pony nub. Buscemi then pulls on it because he doesn't think it's real. It is. When I first started buying professional dress clothes, I thought Hagar was fucking. That was it. Yo. You go into the Hagar store. Oh, shit. Oh, dude. Mm -hmm. I had that Sears dressing room fucking full of Hagar <laughs> and arrow <laughs> wall to wall, dude. <laughs> Just tucking my gut in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. You had to. Walking around the Best Buy floor <laughs> in Hagar slacks. <laughs> Come on. Slinging warranties. Slanging them, dude. Yeah. Just sign here, here, and here. Yeah. Go ahead. Kramer sees all this, sneaks away. Chaz points the gun at Ian. Milo says they're all rock and rollers here. Chaz points it back at him, calls him half a butt puppet. Yep. Mm. 20 CB. He gets a little rant here. You know what it's like to be on the bill and to play for 15 minutes? The only people that are there to see you are the other bands and their girlfriends. Don't talk to me about rock and roll. I'm out there in the clubs and on the streets and I'm living it. I, I am, am rock, rock and roll. roll. It's guys like you and that Jimmy Wing down at Palantine Records that ruin everything for everyone. Cut to Palantine Records. Yeah. Jimmy's secretary flags him down. They're talking about him on the radio. He thinks it's good. There's a million of these yuppie bones fuckers. Bone smugglers. Bone smugglers. Bone smugglers out there. These guys are running the industry and they don't know a damn thing about rock and roll. Kramer calls the cops. Chaz says to play their song on the air because it costs a lot of money or his man's going to gank him right here. Well... Let's not go ganking anyone. <laughs> now, now. Now, now. I thought to gank was to steal. No, yank is to steal or to masturbate. I thought ganking was stealing. I'm going to gank that. Really? Yeah, I do. Gank that soldier boy? Same note, too. Mm -hmm. Ian, have you seen Never Back <laughs> no, Down? No, no. <laughs> No, no, you've got to. No, really? You've no. got to. No, you don't. You don't. You don't got to. It is the best movie that has ever used Crank That Soldier Boy by far. Travis Barker rock remix. The best use of it. You will lose your shit when that happens. This is like a fighting movie. Yeah. It's Fight Club meets Fast and the Furious at an Orlando high school. It meets the invention of YouTube. I'll watch it for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. I do like the Travis Barker rock remix of Crank That Soldier Boy. It's a perfect song. It's my number one song that's ever been on Cinephobe. Let's not go ganking anyone. If we play the tape, will you go? That's all we need, D cheese. He says to play it, Pip hands in the demo reel. They can't play that. They're just set up for CDs. CDs and cassettes. Cassette knocks out the low end. It makes my background vocals sound like someone's stepping on my nuts. Pardon me. CDs, CDs nuts. CDs nuts. Mm. Just to sort of unite those two. There it yeah. is. There's the Emmy. God, Mr. <laughs> Perfectionist. You quit necking on me, you femmes. All right. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, it's, that was yep. an op. Yep. He didn't know. Were they going there? Or? It's absolutely an op, yeah. Okay, all right. Says there's got to be a reel-to-reel -reel somewhere around there. It's a radio station. They're going to look for it. Milo says to get the equipment as they get in there with Marcus. Reggie Kathy. And I started chittering excitedly because that's... Oh, <laughs> we have a new guest. <laughs> What you got there, Ian? The Emmy. I just oh, figured after shit. that CD's nuts comment, I should. Uh huh. Yeah. I should go get old girl. You just got the Emmy for that joke right now. <laughs> yeah. They gave me another one. <laughs> yeah. He just went and received another one. <laughs> they gave me another one. This is two of two. This is the backup, Emmy. Uh huh. There she is. Yeah. Where's the second one? Being polished. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Yo. Is that what ganking is? <laughs> That's what ganking is. <laughs> it's getting ganked right now. Marcus is there. Talk about the white man knocking him down. He's not Marcus, Zach. He is Warden Querns, Martin Querns from Oz. He replaced Leo Glynn, and he's a very hardcore dude. Exposition. And then it turned out he had no control. He gets fired later. Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. Okay. No. In a, oh, I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I realized none of you have seen us. So I was like, oh. I had the soundtrack. I didn't see it. <laughs> Life dude, dude. behind the walls. Wait a second. Kareem, that's my dog. I remember it. Yeah. Why do you have the soundtrack, but you've never seen it? Hold on. There were lyrics to the Oz song? <laughs> no, they did like a rap album that was music from and inspired by the TV show Oz. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because when you said all I thought was the intro, so. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> Ian's <laughs> saying dun, they dun, made dun, a dun. rap album of music. Dun, dun, dun. That feels like one of the whitest purchases that can happen. The Oz soundtrack. I haven't seen <laughs> Oz 
but I purchased for a show you've never watched. Right. That's what makes it white. Yeah, corrupt and make dog behind the walls. Life behind the walls. Kareem, that's my dog. I remember that being the hook. Yeah, that was a good song, dude. It was a good album. I don't think I had HBO, but I was like. Let me get a smattering of all of these different rappers. Right. Check this out. It was a good album. Good show. Yeah, there's a Trick Daddy song on there. Come on. It was great. That was a ton. Styles P and Jadakiss. Marcus is working on the real, Crazy the real. Bones. <laughs> Feral Monch. For the rest of this podcast, can you just whisper little notes about that album? God, man, yeah. <laughs> is it Feral Monk or Feral Monch? Monch. Monch? Monk. Monch. White Man with a Gun. Same shit been happening to my people for 400 plus years. Devin the Dude had a song on there. <laughs> Hip starts connected with Marcus. Hey, you like working here, man? We're down, man. Hendrix was God. You want to take a step back? You standing on my dick, man. Yeah, I seen uh, Anthrax and Public Enemy. That was out of control, man. Together, you know? You catch that one, G? Don't call me G. What do you want me to call you? Hey, come on. All right. That's it. I can't wait for you to put that gun down, because when you do, you and me, me and you, we gonna throw down. That's right, we gonna get serious. Mono a swine. Hey, look, you, just shut your pie hole and keep working. Pie hole. What's that supposed to be? Some kind of cracker slang? Kramer's flopping all over this damn office. He's doing some real Kramer shit here. David Banner track? Crawling, sliding, squeaking. And that was what upset me because when he first comes on the scene, he's wearing glasses, he's got a mustache. I'm like, oh, wow. So this is his opportunity to kind of do some other shit. Mm -hmm. And then he's basically Kramer for the entire fucking movie. No way. Absolutely. That's crazy. They cast Kramer to be Kramer. Cypress Hill song on him. Versus Kramer. Michael Richards has one speed though it's a good speed well he has two speeds he has kramer and then, he has and then he's got laugh factory, laugh factory. Speed. <laughs> oddly enough i was gonna say three speeds then i thought no him and problem child was pretty much the second speed yeah, yeah that was laugh factory <laughs> for sure he takes out a zippo lighter to check out the rusted candy spilled it's flammable wow but he doesn't light himself on fire just yet but shimmy lights up a cigarette in the booth milo says he can't smoke here Ian says the smoke damages the equipment. The reel is almost ready. Chaz says to give him a real nice intro and say nothing about the gun to your head. All right. Who are you guys? My name is Pip. <laughs> the band. The band name. Sorry about that. It's right there on the box. The Lone Rangers. That's original. With my acapella group. The Tone Rangers. How can you pluralize the Lone Ranger? What's wrong with that? Well, there's three of you. You're not exactly lone. Shouldn't you be the three rangers? No idea what you're saying right now. You lost me. Forget about it, Ian. Just play the thing. Yeah, forget it. Just come on. Just, just play it. Listen up, guppies. Ian the shark is back. And have I got a surprise for you. I've got goosebumps, frankly. What's that called to mean? Remember? Something with erection in it. Yep. Pilo erection. There it is. Shout out to R.L. Stein. Do you know that? What? That it's a something erection? Goosebumps? Pilo erection? Pilo erection. No, I didn't know that. You know, when you're uncircumcised, you have to peel your erection. Nope. In order to have sex. Well, it's not peel. Like a banana. It's not like a banana, I'm sure. No? no I don't think it goes Creepy. through sections. That's not. Good gorilla. <laughs> Everybody here circumcised? What's everyone's, what's everyone's situation? Yeah. I'm cut, baby. You know I am. No. You're not circumcised, Zach? Uncut gems, baby. Oh, no way. You're uncut? Ain't Need it. Uncut joms. <laughs> joms. Oh. <laughs> Zach, you rocking a turtleneck like George oh, Sedano? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like Adam Lefko, sneakers <laughs> and a turtleneck. You're dicking an ill-fitting foreskin. Some Jordan 11s. <laughs> <laughs> like Jordan 4s. It's not even 11s. He's wearing like 5s. <laughs> you think it's like Steven Seagal at the end of Half Past Dead. Oh, no. <laughs> when they dig up the gold. It's got a ponytail and everything. Oh, no. It's got a ponytail. It's been beat up a lot. But also great at hand-to-hand. -hand. It's... <laughs> No one quicker in hand to hand than <laughs> and a do rag. No, I don't wear do rags. For the first time ever, I'm willing to bet. Here's that hit single by the Lone Rangers. Hey, I didn't do anything. Tom though must have loaded the tape in wrong. Hey, your machine dilapidated it, man. The reel speeds up and then starts lighting on fire because it's right above the ashtray, of course. Marcus uses Milo's jacket to put it out. Mm -hmm. Ian pours some Budweiser on it. It's wasted. What are we going to do now? Run! 
one. Zach, now to be clear, your plane is still on the tarmac. Yep. Plot liftoff has not occurred yet. What? Look, man, <laughs> we're taxiing. We haven't lifted off yet. We're in line. How long of a flight is this for you? About 30 hours. Wow. It's a Delta, though, so we can watch the movie. Yeah, so I'm going to watch oh, this movie goodness. over and over. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll figure out when it actually lifted off. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Burt Kreischer, is throwing the biggest party of the summer. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is back, hitting up Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park on June 13th. Catch Burt and his favorite comedians like Big J. Okerson, Chad Daniels, Cypher Sounds, Dan Soder, Dave Attell, Kelsey Cook, Mark Norman, and you never know who's dropping by. Don't miss the hottest party of the summer. Get your tickets now at MILB.com slash Charleston. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Burt Kreischer, is throwing the biggest party of the summer. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is back, hitting up Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park on June 13th. Catch Burt and his favorite comedians, like Big J. Okerson, Chad Daniels, Cypher Sounds, Dan Soder, Dave Attell, Kelsey Cook, Mark Norman, and you never know who's dropping by. Don't miss the hottest party of the summer. Get your tickets now at MILB.com slash Charleston. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Burt Kreischer, is throwing the biggest party of the summer. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is back, hitting up Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park on June 13th. Catch Burt and his favorite comedians, like Big J. Okerson, Chad Daniels, Cypher Sounds, Dan Soder, Dave Attell, Kelsey Cook, Mark Norman, and you never know who's dropping by. Don't miss the hottest party of the summer. Get your tickets now at MILB.com slash Charleston. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Burt Kreischer, is throwing the biggest party of the summer. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is back, hitting up Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park on June 13th. Catch Burt and his favorite comedians, like Big J. Okerson, Chad Daniels, Cypher Sounds, Dan Soder, Dave Attell, Kelsey Cook, Mark Norman, you never know who's dropping by. Don't miss the hottest party of the summer. Get your tickets now at MILB.com slash Charleston. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Burt Kreischer, is throwing the biggest party of the summer. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is back, hitting up Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park on June 13th. Catch Burt and his favorite comedians, like Big J. Okerson, Chad Daniels, Cypher Sounds, Dan Soder, Dave Attell, Kelsey Cook, Mark Norman, and you never know who's dropping by. Don't miss the hottest party of the summer. Get your tickets now at MILB.com slash Charleston.